say they're overwhelmed with a number of civilian casualties. This video shows them responding to one of the latest airstrikes that happened in the south of the enclave, where Israel had ordered people to flee to. Tarek Kabu Azum has the latest from a hospital in Gaza. I'm standing inside the Nasser Medical Hospital inside the Gaza Strip. As you can now clearly see right now in the front of you that the medical staffs are just tracing the time in order to provide medical treatment for hundreds and thousands of Palestinians who really were bombarded by the Israeli occupation forces since the early outbreak of the current wave of escalation between Palestinian fighters and the Israeli occupation forces. Now, these medical staffs are working despite the intensive rhythm of uh, responsibilities and even restrictions that had been imposed by the Israeli occupation forces. As you can see, beds are really prepared to receive victims, receive injured people. Like you are, we are talking about a very minimum capacity of medical equipment that cannot be really enough for providing treatment for uh, injured people inside the besieged enclave. Uh, main in fact, uh, the restrictions that had been imposed by the Israeli occupation forces uh, during the last, uh, uh, the, during the early beginning of this uh, conflict, uh, related to the panning and the deprivation of entry of uh, medical supplies to the uh, medical sector inside the Gaza Strip. We're talking about nine parts of nine Palestinian hospitals were bombarded by the Israeli occupation forces. Also, different pharmaceutical warehouses were destroyed by Israeli airstrikes. We are talking about four Palestinian hospitals where were threatened with evacuation in the northern and central areas of the Gaza Strip. Now, the Palestinian Ministry of Health inside the besieged enclave had delivered different demands and calls for the international community and even for international powers to afford a humanitarian corridor for Palestinians to provide them with a humanitarian aid and even to provide the medical sector with different kind of medical items and necessary medical drugs in order to help Palestinians and to provide treatment for injured people as water has run out of, uh, from the Gaza Strip also the, the fuel uh, has been also run out from the only so, so, uh, solar power uh, the only power plant uh, station inside the Gaza Strip. Uh, these uh, kind of restrictions and these kinds of obstacles that Palestinians are facing uh, will bring further catastrophe consequences for the different life aspects inside the uh, Gaza territory. It's important to mention that the medical, uh, the, the medical health system inside the Gaza Strip is witnessing such a great deterioration due to the lack of the fuel and the lack of water sources. We're talking about different stuffs who just are looking exhausted due to their ongoing services despite the fact that they are working with their limited capabilities and their limited capacities. Uh, the, uh, this hospital is trying to invest as much as possible in terms of the fuel consumption in order to, uh, to be able to provide further uh, medical services for its uh, patients. And uh, even with the run out of water, it seems that a new catastrophe might really loom if this situation continues. Well, it's been five days since Israel cut off electricity to Gaza. Residents have been struggling to communicate with, with each other and the outside world. But some have managed to send Al Jazeera audio messages to make sure that their voices are still heard. It is completely dark here. All I can do is to say my voice that the situation here in Gaza is unbearable. I'm afraid to die. I don't want to die. I want to achieve my dreams. All that we hear is bombardment. The Israeli occupation is acting crazy. Israel targets innocent civilians and there is no safer place here. I don't know what the world is waiting for. Here is Gaza where we buried alive by the Israeli occupation. I'm alive now, but I don't know if I will be alive in the coming few moments. We die here in silence and no one hears our voices. In Gaza, Nothing is louder than the sound of the Israeli rockets and missiles. Nothing is louder than the sound of death. My real question is whether the genocide in Gaza is not enough to move the world? I ask everyone who hears my voice, please act immediately to save Gaza. Make sure to subscribe to a channel to the latest news from RDZ World News.